my lovelies welcome to my channel here we are doing another spell for you guys i am currently working on a client and we are halfway through the ritual so this is the i i guess the, the close to the half part of the ceremonial uh ritualized spell work that i'm doing for my client so <clears throat> what we're doing here is uh basically this is a spell for those of you guys that are looking to bring um, an old love back to your life. Uh, if you're trying to bring them back, if there was some type of separation, some type of um, distancing, or even if you feel like your partner has been very cold and distant, this is definitely going to reignite the passion, bring them back to you, and give you an opportunity to rekindle the relationship. This is a obsession spell, uh, slash reconciliation spell. It's both integrated together. So uh, as you guys can see here, we're going to be needing two red candles. Now, um, <clears throat> I will take you guys step by step in what it is that we need to do. So for your ingredients, like I said, two candles. Now, if you're doing this for a woman, you would use um, a vaginal uh, candle that represents their private part. If you're doing this for a man, then you would use the male uh, figure, as you guys can see here. And the second red candle has to be a taper candle like this one. Um, don't use small ones because it is a process and you don't want it to burn as quickly, um, but you don't need a seven, uh, seven day candle because we're not really going to be burning this one. We're just going to <clears throat> basically um, bind their energy into this candle and that's what we're using it for, okay? All right, so you're also going to be needing mistletoe leaves. You're also going to be needing some type of oil. Now, if you guys don't have, um, if you guys don't have or there, it's difficult for you guys to get a hold of Dove's Blood, then you guys can use any type of love oil, uh, precipitation red oil definitely does the trick so again if you want to substitute the dove's uh blood then you would use the precipitation the red precipitation uh you're also going to be needing sugar and you are going to be using honey as well very very important in this process uh, you're going to be needing a uh something to hold the taper candle as you guys can see here and you're also going to be using, now you have two options. You can use cayenne uh, pepper, uh, which is a chili pepper, um, or you can use paprika. That's what we're going to be using today, paprika and chili powder. Um, now you guys know when it comes to love and when it comes to passion and strong obsession spells, uh, red chili powder is used very often. Why? Because it ignites the passion. It's very fiery. Um, instead of using the regular cinnamon, which is more, yes, it is passionate, but it's more on a subtle, like love type of energy. And we're wanting to really ignite the passion in the partner to push them to come towards us quicker. So that's the reason why we're going to be using paprika and chili powder, but you can as well substitute that for cayenne pepper if you have that as well. Okay. All right. Now you're also going to be needing you're going to be needing, like I said, the two red candles. Uh, you're going to be needing a string in, and um, you're going to need a string and a red cloth. Now, as you guys can see here, we have a pretty big sacket bag, and the, uh, the string is on here, so I'm going to be using this uh, to do the knots, okay? Um, so you, if you don't have a sacket bag, then you would have to use... Uh, like I said, a red cloth as well as red uh, thread or string, all right? Okay, what else are you going to be needing? You're going to be needing a picture of the person or target that you're doing this for. I just have this for showing purposes. Of course, I have uh, my client's uh, picture and information or the target. Um, but anyways, for showing purposes, this is what I'm using. Okay, so also you're going to be using a red pen or a red marker very important um <clears throat> now this process is a bit 
um, there's going to be some integrated ingredients here that I'm going to be using, which is holy water that we have here. I'm going to be using that to baptize this candle. And we're also going to be using uh, spirit powder. Now, I'm not sure if you guys don't know about spirit powder or don't know how to use it. If you really don't know how to use it, my advice, don't use it. Um, what spirit powder is, is uh, it's highly used in Santeria or in, um, in Voodoo. Uh, and, the, and the reasoning behind it or the power behind spirit powder is if you don't happen to have anything that was a belonging to the partner, as an example, like a, a sock, a part of their you know, clothes, anything like that, um, then it's really difficult um, to put the, uh, pretty much when we're putting the, their energy into an object like the candle, um, it's really difficult to do. It is a very long process. Is it are you able to do it without spirit powder? Absolutely. I do it all the time. Um, but it just depends on the circumstance of the situation. The more complex, the more difficult it is, you will you will eventually be needing to use spirit powder. Now, spirit powder is exactly that. It is a powder that is used to substitute um, any type of personal belonging of the person when it's done in a ritualized form. What you're doing is basically you are extracting and pulling their energy through the spirit powder. And of course, if you work with ancestors and you work with uh, deities or spirits, they will help you facilitate um, and to be able to extract their energy and put it, like I said, in objects or uh, when you're doing spell work to bring them closer to you, basically have them running back to you. All right. OK, so enough about that. I can go on for hours. Um, but of course, we don't want to do that. Okay, let's get to the nitty gritty. All right, so what you're going to do is very, very important. The first step to do is you're going to get their picture, okay? Now, if you don't have a picture, can you do this? No, you cannot. And I hope you guys don't mind my crappy looking nails. Um, I've been working very heavy magic. I've been working a lot lately with uh, clay and um, really, you know, uh, just working my hands uh, very often on everyday basis lately. Uh, so anyways, and of course, because of the pandemic that's going on, it's just it's just craziness. No one wants to uh, really, um, no one really wants to, uh, you know, put themselves out there for, like, expose themselves or whatever. So it's really difficult to... Um, get my regular nail technicians to obviously do my nails. I know that's completely outside the, just throwing it out there. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So what we're going to do, sorry about that spiel. Um, so what we're going to do here is you're going to be needing the picture of the person that you're doing this for. As you guys can see, my amazing art skills here. So as an example, if you're doing this for a woman, um, then you would need their the picture of them. It has to be a recent picture. It cannot be older than one year. Uh, if you're doing it for a man, it's the same deal. It has to be recent. It cannot be over a year uh, old, the picture. All right, so the first step to do this work is you're going to have to find the time to be able to relax without being interrupted. The reason why, because we're going to be putting this picture um, well, before we get into that, you're going to turn the picture around in the back of it. You're going to put their name and last name, okay? And their date of birth. All right. Can you do this without this information? No, you cannot. You need a picture of them. You need their first name, their last name, and their date of birth, okay? You're, this is where you're going to be using the red pen or marker. You're going to flip the picture around and you're going to write down their first name, last name, and date of birth. Okay. Once we're done with that, what are we going to do? We're going to get this picture with their face and we're going to put this in our private area. And we're going to leave it there for an hour. It cannot be less than an hour. It has to be done 
for an hour. Now, because I'm doing this for a client, obviously, I'm not trying to attract that person to me. Um, so that's the reason why we're going to be using a spirit powder as well as the figure, uh, the genital candle um, for the target. But if you're doing this for yourself, you would need to get a picture of them, write down their first name, last name, date of birth, flip it over, and you're going to put this in your crotch area, okay? Now, for men, you put it in your crotch area. You're going to have to, like I said, sit still for an hour, relax. And it's very important through this process, you guys, to really visualize the end result. What is it that you're wanting? You're trying to make them obsess about you. So you're going to be thinking they're going to be obsessed. They're going to be thinking about me day and night. Um, they're going to desire me. I will become their weakness. Stuff like that, okay? Very important when doing this. So the same thing for women. The closer you get this picture to your private part, the more powerful it becomes. So keep that in mind. So when you put it in your private area, you're going to, like I said, really visualize and put the intent, the energy of what you're doing. You are literally, it doesn't get any more closer uh, to have them basically in your private area, right? So really it's about intention here and this process must not be interrupted. So it's very important to take your time when doing this, okay? All right. So once we've done this, once the hour is up, we're going to then put the picture on the plate. And uh, FYI for you guys, I highly encourage you guys to get a parchment uh, sheet paper so that you can put the picture and everything that's going to go into it. Um, so that way when you're ready to basically pick it up, it's very easy for you to fold it in this parchment paper and then uh, put it into the socket bag or the red cloth that you're using. Okay. All right. Okay. So what happens when we're done with that one hour process, we're going to get the candles and this is where you would put some holy water on both, uh, the, their genital candle and the taper candle. So what you're going to do is basically you're going to write down their first name, last name, date of birth going up, going towards the wick, okay? Um, then you're going to uh, turn it a little bit and you're going to write down your first name, last name, and date of birth as well. It has to be connected to their name. Make sure to make your name much bigger and much darker, okay? So really carve that in. Now, when doing this, it is very important. You can carve this with a nail. You can carve it with your own nails. You can also carve it um, if you have rose thorns, which is what we did. Um, rose thorns are used specifically for uh, to strengthen and empower love spells. So if you do happen to have a rose bush, um, cutting a rose that has thorns, so that you can dry it and then use it uh, when you're ready to do this spell work, okay? All right, so once you've done that with the taper candle, what you're going to do now here is you're going to get their candle or the representation of them, and you're going to write down their first name, last name, and date of birth, okay? So you're going to write that down in an upward position, like I said, towards the wick. Then you're going to flip it, and you're going to be writing down... Um, <clears throat> basically on every side what it is that you're wanting. So an example, uh, you're going to lust after me. You're going to think of me day and night. I will become your weakness. You will obsess over me day and night. And right at the tip, we put you will only be uh, sexually satisfied and sexually aroused when you are around and then my client's name and her information. So this is where you would put your information, okay? All right. So once we got that, like I said, you're going to be using the, uh, the, the holy water to, uh, to baptize basically the candle. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically wet it and rub it in an upward position, blessing it in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. I bless and consecrate this candle 
I call upon, and you're going to say their first name, last name, date of birth. I ask you, uh, angel or archangel um, of the of so and so, uh, the day you were born, you were present. I ask you to be present here now. I call you so that you can assist me in baptizing this candle to be the representation of so and so. Um, I bring and pull towards this object their essence, their energy, that of their aura field. Once that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to, let me put this to the side. All right, so once we have the picture, we're going to put it to the side. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, um, <clears throat> we're going to, uh, like I said, if you guys have parchment paper, use this parchment paper. It's going to make it much more easy for you guys, okay? All right. So once we put the parchment paper and we're pretty much ready to go, this is the process where once it's been ritualized, once it's been blessed, and once you've put their first name, last name, date of birth, and your information, we're going to light this candle, the taper candle. Okay, we're going to light it before beginning the work. Let me look for my matches. I know I had them somewhere. Oh, they're right here. Very important for you guys not to use lighter, you guys. You guys already know, especially when you've already consecrated or ritualized your tools and ingredients. Um, it pretty much defeats the purpose uh, when you're lighting it with a lighter. So it's very important to light the candle with matches, okay? All right. <clears throat> so we have the candle pretty much going. Let me show you guys right quick. All right. Okay, so we're going to put this. It's going to be, like I said, keep it by your side where you're doing your work. Okay, so let me see. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use a plate. Um, like I said, if you have parchment paper, put the parchment paper on top of the plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some sugar. We're going to put some sugar on the parchment paper in a circular motion. Okay. And be abundant. All right. Okay, once that is done, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the picture. Um, we're going to put the picture on top of the on top of the sugar. So you would put it like this. I'm going to uh, cut this part out so I can integrate my client's information. Uh, so give me one second. Okay, so I have my client's information and the picture on top of this, but as a, uh, just showing purposes, this is where you would put the picture on top of the sugar, and then we're going to put all the other ingredients on top. So let me... Okay, you guys, so at this point, once the picture has been placed on top of the sugar, this is where we're going to add the honey, and then we're going to add the chili powders on here, okay? So you guys can see we've skipped that step just to show you guys how it's going to look, as I do want to obviously keep my client's information completely private. All right, so once we've done that, what we're going to do now is... We're going to add some of the mistletoe leaves on top of this. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me bless this very quickly in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I bless and consecrate uh, these ingredients that are going into the spell work. The sugar so that it could sweeten the relationship so that it could only 
put uh, loving memories and fond memories of this of uh, fond memories in my client's partner's mind day and night uh, honey so that her lips may be sweet and enhance the love the admiration and the devotion that he feels towards her the chili powders bless them and ignite the passion and desire within them bring the draw drawing them closer and bringing them closer together bless the mistletoes bless the mistletoes that are going into this spell work so that it may increase their love and devotion so that it can bring them closer together so that their paths may meet once again um, giving each other undivided attention love respect admiration trust for one another so that they may uh, find bountiful um, experiences in this relationship in the name of the father the son the holy ghost i bless and consecrate Okay. All right, you guys. So once we have that done, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to basically wait um, through this process when you're doing this. Um, like I said, before you begin to put everything together, you must light the taper candle. So you're going to keep this close to the taper candle so that it can, uh, you know, completely do the process together one with the other as it does. It is a combination. Um, so we're basically done with this process and now it's basically putting all your intention, focus and energy towards what you're doing to, uh, to be able to see quick and fast lightning results. So you're going to, at this point, wait until the taper candle is completely done. Once it's extinguished, then that's when you're going to pick this up. Um, now let's prepare this candle. So, like I said, you're going to bless it, you're going to baptize it, call upon their archangel, the archangel that was present when, they're, when they were born, ask them for assistance, and call on spirits. So, give me one second. Let me put this here. In the name of the Father, Son, and the, Holy, and the Holy Ghost, I bless and consecrate this. <clears throat> to bless it and empower it so that it can render quick and fast lightning results to my client. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to be using the Dove's oil. But like I said, if you guys don't have this, you guys can use precipitation oil, okay? So I'm going to... Oh. Yes, and I'm going to basically just rub it in an upward posi position. So the purpose of this candle is not to um, not to burn it, but to actually uh, pretty much extract and put their energy, their uh, essence into this candle. And that's why we're using this candle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get some of the spirit powder. I'm going to powder it. Oh, this is extremely, extremely powerful, you guys. You can feel the energy just vibrate off of this. If you guys have ever worked with spirit powder, you guys know how powerful this is. Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I bless and consecrate. I baptize this candle as a representation of... I call upon their archangel, the archangel that was present in their birth. I baptize it now as it was that day of their birth. I am extracting and pulling their energy towards this candle to be a representation of their spirit, of their essence, of who they are. I call upon you. I call upon the spirits that work with me to assist me in the consecration of this candle so that 
essence, energy, and aura goes into uh, this candle to be a representation of their physical body. You will only think You will lust after her. You will think of her day and night. You will have no rest. You will have the desire and the need and the impulse to hear her voice. Only her voice will bring calmness to you. Only her voice will bring that of peace. You will find peace within her and around her. She will become your weakness. You will have no other intention or desire but that to a pleaser, that to to make her happy, to devote yourself to her, to become a better man for her. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I bless it. All right, you guys, so once that is done, we're going to close this up. All right. So once that is done and once it has been blessed, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, basically put this on top of this. Okay, so at this point, we have concluded the spell. We're going to, like I said, very important to keep the candle burning next to this work. Very important, you guys, to keep this at an altar or to keep it wherever you're doing your working to keep it nearby. Once the taper candle is extinguished, what you're going to do is you're going to basically fold this up. You're going to fit it into the socket bag or the red cloth that you're using. Uh, you're going to put it in the red cloth. Then you're going to get the thread or the string that you're using, which, like I said, must be red. Uh, and you're going to basically tie three knots to it. So when can you do this? Very important. You can do this any day of the week. It does not matter. If you want to empower it, do it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. Okay? What phase of the moon? It does not matter. If you want to empower it, make sure to use it or to do this uh, in new moon or in waxing or full moon. Okay. All right. So once you've done this, once it is completed, you're going to put it in the uh, red cloth or red socket that you're using. You're going to tie three knots. When you tie each knot, what you're going to say is you're going to state out loud what it is that you want. Uh, you're going to say, my partner returns to me now. He comes willing, happy, and completely uh, submit it to me, submit it to my person, submit it to making me happy. Um, and whatever it is that you're asking for, you're going to tie the first knot, then you're going to tie the second knot, basically saying out loud what you're wanting to happen. So once that is done, what you're going to do is um, you're going to, like I said, put it in a red cloth or in a red socket bag and keep it um, under your bed or keep it in your altar for three uh, to four days. After the third or fourth day, what you're going to do is you're going to go out and bury this. Now, be mindful wherever it is that you bury this. Uh, like I said, be mindful and know exactly where you're putting it. Should you grow tired of this relationship or at some point uh, no longer want to be in this relationship, then you can always go back and undo it basically um, removing all the ingredients and just uh, undoing or untying basically the knots. So again, this is, um, it's rather simplistic. It's not as difficult. Ingredients may be a bit difficult to find. Nonetheless, the more effort and the more you go out of your way to make this happen or to get the ingredients of the spell work that you're doing, the more power you're giving it to the spell. Why? Because you're putting your intention. It is working energy in movement. So again, you will be amazed at how quick you get the results. They will be calling you. They will be looking for you. They will be letting you know how much obsessed they are about you or how constantly they're thinking of you 
or how randomly they had dreams about you, etc. So take this as a manifestation. Take it as a sign of the manifestation that was given to you. Once this is done, once the person has returned to you, make sure to appease and thank the spirits, whatever spirits you're working with. If you're just calling on, uh, upon benevolent spirits to help you and assist you in this love spell, then make sure to offer them an apple. Make sure to take an apple to a tree. Offer it. Um, you can also offer seeds. You can all, you know, pretty much anything that comes out of your heart. The, the whole point here is to be grateful about the manifestation, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this spell. I hope that it gives to you guys very fast, quick results. And definitely comment below. Let me know your experience. Until then, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.